do a God of War talkie. Got my Switch. I can play Mario Odyssey anywhere these days, man. It's a new day. Do do do. Can't wait for it. Uh, no. Stay back, boy. This fight is mine. Hold on, father. I got you. Remember your lessons, boy. Yes, father. Hello, everyone. Welcome to game a game talk. I yeah. don't know if that's a branded thing. I, I find it hard to believe that Game Talks is not an already branded property by some other more famous people. Probably somewhere out there. Spike TV, maybe? It's, yeah, it's too easy. It's yeah. too it's low-hanging fruit as far as the name is. We don't know, not sure what this is called, but what it is is us talking about a game. Today's game is God of War. The new one, not the old ones. We're not, we're not, going, we're not going that far back in the archives. I forgot all about the old ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, God of War. Came out April. It's June now that you're probably seeing this, or maybe uh, by the end of this week it would still be May. So if it goes up Friday, it will be June first. Ah, June first, then most likely June first. <laughs> so welcome to June. We're gonna talk about God of War in June. So it's been out what two months? Yep, uh, it came out four twenty. Four twenty, and yeah. it is. I, I think it's safe to say it's changed the game a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. At least mentally. Definitely, for, yeah. For some people, Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, has publicly come out and said, "I want one of those." Mm. Which, I mean, I don't know if he should be saying, I want one of those. He should right. maybe be saying, I want a good game. True. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not necessarily rip off God of War completely, but right. yeah, they are starved for a good cinematic single player experience. Mm. So, and, and that, that's, go ahead, I'm sorry, that's, please. That's what we're talking about today. Yeah, that is what this is. Fantastic. So, I guess we need to start out with going into the game. What, what, what's our experience with God of War to begin with? Okay, for me, um, the first one I ever played to completion was God of War 3. Back okay. on the PlayStation 3. I think that was like 2010, mm -hmm. so pretty long of the tooth since then. Um, right before it came out, I believe they released an HD collection of sorts of the first two. Yep. And I went back and played like half of each of them and then watched the rest of the cutscenes on YouTube just okay. to get the story. Because <laughs> yeah. at that point in my life, it was weird because like in 2007 was when I first started to realize that like, okay, video game stories can be really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Like Bioshock, Mass Effect. I was like, these are like books that you can yep. play almost. Like, this <laughs> yeah. is fantastic. So like in my mindset going into it was everyone loves these God of War games. It must be because of the story. Right. So I was like, I got to go back and watch all these cutscenes if I'm not going to beat the game. But mm -hmm. dummy will everyone kind of like the gameplay more. Yeah. Like all along that was kind of the thing. I but, feel like then it was like, oh, you can dismember people. You're yeah. God, and you kill yeah. gods. These giant boss fights. Yeah. yeah. The the story was kind of incidental in those games. I feel, but this one's a lot different. We'll talk about that in a little oh, bit. Yes. But, uh, so yeah, my my experience wasn't. Like when I heard that there was a new God of War coming to PS4, I wasn't like, I'm gonna go get a PS4 and buy that game immediately. Like that mm -hmm. was not, it wasn't even on my radar. And then once I saw it um, in E3 2016, I believe, uh, my reaction was kind of with the general internet negativity of like, oh, so you took God of War and made it The Last of Us. <laughs> uh. Where people are seeing it and they're like, okay, it's like super serious. There's not a whole lot of over the top action that we see. There's Kratos being a dad to a little boy that you carry around the whole time I was I, I, was, I didn't understand it I guess sure. um, but let's just say no no spoilers for the video but I I turned a complete 180 on this game yeah I thought so, you were about to say no spoiler are we were gonna spoil the game. oh yeah we're gonna spoil the game <laughs> yeah yeah so so get out of here Kevin, <laughs> Kevin get out of here if you if you haven't finished it yet right yeah and was, you haven't because I still have your ps4 so. <laughs> I was about to say that I was like there will be well, there will be spoilers copious amounts copious amounts yes. deep deep seated uh, fiery spoilers from the pits of hell Yep. With one L. Helheim. Helheim. Yep. The pits of Helheim from our, where, from where our spoilers are coming from. For me, never played a God of War game. Uh, the only God of War game I played, because, again, God of War, those games were coming out before I was 17. So I wasn't able to buy them myself. Um, my, and your mama ain't gonna buy yeah, you God my, of War. <laughs> my mom didn't see a need for me to have God of War. Yeah. But really it was one of those things where as a child it wasn't like I, I pined for the God of War. It was more of like, oh, that'd be cool if I could play that, but yeah. one day. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I never played 1, 2, or 3. I did, my stepdad had a PSP that he bought that he played for some reason. And there the was PSP a, one, man. There was a PSP God of War <laughs> game that I was, I only played it for like 10 minutes. 
Like there, one day I was at home in the summertime. I picked up the PSP because it was like the God of War version yeah. of the PSP. Picked it up. I was like, I'll play this for a few minutes, and then I was done. You're done. I wasn't disappointed. It was just like I have something else to do. And yeah. I, it wasn't that intriguing. But you have swung the Blades of Chaos. Around, I have swung the Blades so of Chaos. So that when we got to that moment, you were like, "This is awesome." Well, I knew about the Blades of Chaos. Yeah. I I know about the branding. I know about the character mm -hmm. Kratos. I know that he was the Ghost of Sparta. I knew that he had these Blades of Chaos on the chains. Mm -hmm. Very unique weapon. Yep. Um, but that's all. I mean, that's all I knew. I knew that he was not the character that he is in this game. That mm -hmm. originally he was not a father figure. He was an angsty. Uh, God, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, scorned. He was scorned, mm -hmm. and then he was just on a on a journey to kill God. That's what I knew. Going a journey in. of redemption and revenge. Not that's, really a whole lot of redemption, just a lot of revenge. <laughs> a lot of a lot of revenge. Yeah. Uh, but that is not the case. So that's that's where we're coming from. Now, enter God of War. No, it's not God of War Four. People keep saying God of War Four. Nope. If it was titled God of War Four, it'd be on the it'd be on the case. Mm -hmm. So bet that away. It's if you call it God of War 4, turn off the TV, turn off the video. Scout. Get out. Shoot, shoot. <laughs> um, Not but, true. Yeah, no, no you, you guys can stay. But you're wrong. You're yeah, wrong. Yeah, you're wrong. Don't forget um, about that. I also think that's really interesting that they named it God of War. Because yeah. it's not a remake. It's not a reboot. I mean, it mm -hmm. kind of is a reboot. It could be a reboot. They could have like totally just forgotten everything that happened before. But mm -hmm. then I don't think it would be as special as it is. Correct. Because you wouldn't have the, the whole secrets that Kratos is hiding. There'd yes. be no... It's yeah. very... It wouldn't have the... I think it's got a very Breaking Bad vibe, the mm -hmm. game does, where it's like, this guy has a bunch of sins he's done, they're catching up to him finally. Yeah. A lot of Breaking Bad Season 5 vibes. Mm. But um, Which is, of course, why you like it. Yes. <laughs> I love Breaking Bad. I bought this jacket at Belk just because I was like, this is Walter White's jacket. <laughs> Next thing I'm going to do is buy some um, some uh, some medicine, start cooking my own meth. Pseudo. Pseudo. Pseudo I, was, I, was trying to get my, I was trying to get my brain there. You just haven't cooked meth, Keith. That's, That's true. The problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's um, the problem. All right, so we're we're both uh, kind of green as grass. Mm -hmm. You're a little bit greener than I am. I'm green. But we're going to. So, what exactly like made you want to get this game? Was it just the overwhelming positive response it was getting? And... Yeah, there's a. I definitely follow the critics a lot of times. Mm -hmm. If yeah. the critic, if the way I see it is like I can I can develop my own opinions of games. I have no problem doing that. Um, no problem creating my own opinions and deciding whether I like a game, whether it's good to me. But I know that usually if critics say a game is good. It's a chew-in for me to like it. Yeah. Because it's a lot harder to please a critic than it is to please me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, man, this game must be good. I knew it was kind of on the fence. Like, people were like, oh, I don't know if I like Kratos this way. But then whenever it came out, like, this game is... Tens, 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 Yeah, tens, it just tens. tens all over the place. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to play a 10 out of 10 game. I don't care who says it's 10 out of... Like, if it's a, if it's a well-known critic, a well-known mm -hmm. outlet that says this game is 10 out of 10... I will play that game. Mm -hmm. Basically, what got me is I don't. I didn't really have any plans to play it until the reviews started coming out. And basically, to me, it seemed like the second coming of The Last of Us. Yeah. Just that, like, we're nearing the end of a PlayStation's life. There's this epic cinematic game coming out, and I got the feeling that it was going to make me cry. It didn't make me cry, but it did make me several times stand up during a scene yeah. and just like walk around while I'm playing it because yeah, like yeah, I yeah. just can't sit down. So it had it had moments that affected me on a on a neurological level in right, my brain exactly which is what i was looking for but yeah um so the critics are kind of what got me me into it too um yeah not very inspired answers for, <laughs> for why we <laughs> yeah, decided it, to check yeah, the game it, out it wasn't. everyone <laughs> said it was fantastic and um no one came down from heaven and told me to play it no yeah. one came from asgard <laughs> <laughs> to say you must play this game and it was kind of like um it, it reminded me of like 2018's zelda breath of the wild sort of just in like that it's this overwhelming consensus of like this is changing the landscape of video yeah. games. I think what's the thing is like it's things usually happen that way. P people have that reaction when it, pe you're given something you didn't know you wanted or needed. Yeah. Like nobody nobody knew that they needed a story where Kratos becomes a good father. Yeah. But then whenever you have that story, it's like I'm glad I have this. I don't think I can yeah. live without it now because yeah. that, that that is a yeah interesting tale. Also, a story with story. I think. We're going to talk about the story, and I think segueing into that, since we're talking about the critics, we're talking about how everybody loved it, and I think a lot of what people love about it is the story. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what I've been saying to other people talking about the game is that I think there's this innate thing in everyone, in every human being, whether you have a father figure or not, there's an innate thing in humans that you, I think you want to please, there's a, there's a, a relationship with a father that you desire. 
I think that's an innate thing in all human beings. I think that's why you have a lot of problems, like whenever families are fatherless. I'm not saying that men are better. I'm just saying that there. I think there's a a biological thing about human beings that we desire relationships with our fathers. Mm-hmm. And I think a story of a relationship being built between a <clears throat> uh, unlikely father and an unlikely pairing of a son, I think that resonates with people. I think that's yeah. why people like it. I also think it's one of those things where you can relate to the, the child or the father. Yeah. You can be like, oh, I'm getting a, a father figure kind of thing, or you can feel like the father figure. Mm-hmm. Uh, the God of War and The Last of Us both made me want to be a dad pretty bad. So Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even if there's no chance that we have to fight to the top of a mountain or kill a horde of zombies. Maybe. Maybe the maybe. zombies. Maybe, maybe the zombies. The zombies. Yeah. Exactly. So, I don't You want to go ahead and go into the story? Of Let's, oh, yeah. That's why I'm here. Okay. That's All right. So, here. Keith, I'm playing this game. Um, it's a rainy Monday afternoon. I've mm-hmm. just gotten off work. I settle into bed. I've got my TV, my 42-inch TV right in front of my bed. Nice. Pull my blanket up to my, up to my chest, <laughs> and I settle in. All right. And, uh... Already I'm captivated just by how the camera never cuts. Yeah, never. It's like, I don't know if you guys have seen that movie Birdman with Michael Keaton. But that movie is filmed in one consecutive take. Wow. And that always stood out to me as like, man, that is amazing. Because like you never notice how often things just cut until something doesn't do it. Yeah. (laughs) And so like just the way that God of War, like even when you're at the, the main menu and it's like, it's not like press new game. It's like, press this button to swing this axe. Yeah. And then Kratos just starts hitting the tree. Like, the, the pause menu is Kratos standing by a tree. And to start the game, you just start swinging the axe. Mm-hmm. And immediately you're in the story. The camera yeah. kind of swings back. Yeah. And you're chopping it down. The camera just keeps following you around. And then already, you know, playing into what you said about everyone likes the father figure thing, I'm already, you know, 100% in whenever I'm teaching Atreus how to hunt deer. Yeah. Hunting deer. That's amazing. <laughs> you're a hunting deer. Yeah. Where do I go? In the direction of deer, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, "This is awesome." Yeah. And then, uh, what, like, I'd heard some things from critics, like that Kratos might have some like repentance coming up for what mm-hmm. he's done in the past. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. when when you're back at the house and this seemingly drunk fool starts showing up, mm. starts causing a ruckus with you, starts saying he knows who you are and stuff, that's when my little antennas go up, and I'm like, "Ooh, this story's oh. about to get cool." Yeah. And he's like, I know who you are. And I'm like, oh, this drunk fool. I'm about to wreck his yeah. world. <laughs> yeah. And then it does not go that way. It does not. You do not wreck him. You do <laughs> you not do wreck, not wreck him. We're talking about Balder, folks. Balder. Uh, you that only is a know spoiler. Him for, yeah, that is a spoiler. You only know him for a while as the stranger. The stranger. Which I loved. I loved because he, yeah, the stranger. He, he looks like a normal normal yeah. Norse dude who walks yeah, up with a bunch like of Like a tattoos. trashy, tattooed, yeah. drunk dude coming up, starting, tra- starting stuff with you. Yeah. Like That moment, the moment where like Kratos, he's like, He's antagonizing Kratos, and Kratos goes, "You do not want this fight," and <laughs> and he like, so he punches him several times, mm-hmm. like uh, uh, assumingly like a human being would, and then Kratos like he just rears back and like decks him to the dirt, and you're like, "Yeah, I'm Kratos. Step off. I got what a, you doing? I got a story that's gonna start later." Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, what I'm thinking. Yeah. But then whenever he turns around, he's just like he like wipes his mouth off or whatever. He's like, "No, it's my turn or whatever," and he just like. <laughs> cracks you up yeah. over the house yeah. and you fly into the field behind your house and he's like well plot hooked <laughs> yeah. that's when I'm like is this Odin yeah <laughs> like, what has happened what's going on and then he says Odin when Odin sent me here and I'm like oh snap oh that's Kratos crazy. made Odin mad <laughs> yeah what? oh my god I thought he was just minding his own business yeah I thought he was just out there yeah yeah is that moment and the fight following, I think that is a just a true hinge pin of this whole game. Like, Absolutely. If you weren't hooked yet, there's no way you don't make it to the end of this one now that you've done the stranger fight. Yeah. That fight I've described as when you're fighting this guy we're talking about, it is as it is equal parts. I'm a god of Olympus, and equal parts. This is like a barroom brawl. Like there's there's so many fists. It's so there's good. so like and there's just like you're just. There's parts where you're just on top of him, like mm-hmm. ground and pound, punching yeah. him, and it's just like back and I can't even uh, describe it because I get excited thinking about it. I know. It. I just want to go play the game again <laughs> yeah, right now, honestly. Exactly. Um, and I don't know, Keith, uh, neither of us have a PS4 Pro, correct? I do not have a Pro. So this game probably looks even better on a Pro. I just I'm want to sure say, I, mm, if I ever replay this game, I'm going to have to buy my own PS4 at some point and replay mm-hmm. this game. Um, also, just want to give a quick shout out to Kevin McAbee, number one fan. K-Mac. He, K-Mac, he um, let me borrow his PS4. For, uh, actually, he let me borrow it for Nino Kuni 2, mm-hmm. which I did not end up loving nearly as much as the first one. And then I was about to give it back to him because I was like, eh, I don't really even feel Nino Kuni 2. And then God of War came out and I was like, well, let me just borrow nah. it for another month. <laughs> and Kevin was like, as long as I keep, get those games, then you know, keep yeah, it as long no as you doubt. want, man. 
So that's a good arrangement. Yeah. Yep. I might get Uncharted Four before I get my back too. We'll see. About <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the yeah. end of the fight. Yes. You snap Baldur's neck. Mm-hmm. Like there's a the, the fight. There's parts of the fight where like he's Baldur is a little bit winded, and Kratos turns around to a brick wall or a stone wall and punches parts of it off, and then it falls down on him. Like this, there are many times where you're like, this fight's obviously over. There's how much pain can this guy take? And then you learn part of the thing is he, the Baldur shell. I can't feel any of this, mm-hmm. and so you learn throughout the story that part of Baldur's thing is that he is invulnerable to all pain, death, etc. Um, but at the end of the fight, you snap his neck and toss him into a ravine, and you think, okay, that's it. Mm-hmm. He's done. Yep. Then back to Atreus. Yep. Um, yeah, we'll talk more about Baldur in a little bit, but yeah. the stranger. Certainly. But um, yeah, then we go back to Atreus. This is, um, so then Atreus, this is after Atreus has killed the deer. Yeah. Yeah. Now we move to the boar, right? I think we, we, we this is where we yeah. shoot the boar later on. Yeah. Right? And then we, we shoot the boar, and then we find out that it's someone's friend. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, you shot my friend. And I'm like, oh, I mean, I, now I feel bad. Yeah, now I feel bad. And then we meet the Witch of the Woods. The Witch of the Woods. And we go into this, like, this part of the part of the game is like borderline psychedelic. Yeah. We're talking about elves and stuff and everything's all colorful and we're in the woods and like there's might as well be like little white and red mushrooms everywhere. Like yeah. it's pretty trippy. Yeah. And then like so we meet the Witch of the Woods. And uh then what happens? We go to we go to Alfheim. Yeah, we get yeah, get, she tells us cuz we're we tell her we're trying to get we're trying to, to get the our the yeah, mama to the peak. Mm-hmm. And she points us in the right direction. We gotta go to Al- yeah. We gotta go to uh, Alfheim. No, that not yet. We we get almost to the peak. And then there's Remember? like black fog. And there's black fog. Yeah. And she tells us you gotta go get the light of Alfheim to dispel this. We go to our first new realm using the realm travel thing. And once I saw that and I saw it was called Alfheim, I was like, there's probably gonna be a lot of Himes that yeah. we go to. That's the Norse um, thing. It's all the Himes. Yeah, yeah. It made sense once I. Where Keith? What country is Nordic? Is that like Dutchland? Like, yeah, it's, you, the Dutch, Scandinavia, yeah, Scan, yeah, Scandinavia, basically where the Vikings Dinga, Dinga, Durgen, people yeah, like that. where the Vikings come okay, from. Okay, okay. The, the very Viking religion. Okay, gotcha. Um, which is why everybody looks so Viking. All the, the there's shit a lot of gingers in this in there's, the game too. Yeah, there's a lot of. There's definitely a lot of. of is the whole thing is you're in North, Norse mythology. I kind of wonder where this fits into like real the real world. Like obviously they've taken liberties with the whole universe. Mm-hmm. Like their Greek Greek gods exist. Norse gods also exist. Egyptian gods. Egyptian gods also exist. Mm-hmm. We learn, so they've taken some liberties. Not if you believe in those things, that's fine. I can't imagine you believe in all three. Does anyone believe in any of those anymore? Do some, the Egyptians still believe in them? I don't Rome? know. I'm just saying. I'm sure there are certain people who still believe in the, the existence of these gods. Most likely. No, there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Stop. Don't. We're not upset with you. <laughs> we're not saying you're dumb. We're saying you're a little behind the times. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you you do you, sister and brother. <laughs> um, so what what do we want to hit? Because there's no way we're going to talk about this whole story That's all true. the way through. We we were kind of going through a beat for beat there for we a little were. while, but we will be here for three hours if we do that. <laughs> yeah. So we're just excited. We're just so excited. <laughs> so we go to Alfheim, then there's Helheim. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's talk about um, Atreus for a minute. Yes. Atreus is half god, and yes. a, we assume half human. Right, that's what we assume. We Until assume, the end of the game. We assume he's half god, half human. And that for some reason, I still don't quite understand this, but the conflicting state of his being where he is a god but doesn't know it makes him ill. Yeah, it makes him sick. Can't makes him sick. It. And so he's got to go steal something from Helheim, Kratos does. Mm. And uh, I think you had, there was a moment that really stood out yeah, to you. That mo- there's a moment where Kratos, because you learn in the beginning that he has just overcome some sickness. Mm-hmm. That he's Kratos. Yeah, will, yeah, yeah. Kratos will ask him like, "How do you feel? Or are you feeling bad or whatever?" And towards the beginning, uh, Atreus always he's coughs a little bit, but he's okay. You fight somebody, and at the end of that fight, you um, Atreus falls over, passes out, and Kratos. Because by this time, you've already attached the head. And that was when he tries to Spartan rage out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah. then he breaks. Boy.exe has stopped working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, so we need to ex- also say that you you find a character at the top of their first mountain you think you're supposed to go to. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name is Mimir. He is attached to a tree. He like is a, a seer. He knows all things pretty much. Uh, and he says, "Kratos, chop my head off. Take me with you. The witch can bring me back to life." And then when she brings him back to life as a head, uh, 
Kratos straps his head to his belt, and so then that's where you're able to learn a lot of lore. Mm -hmm. uh, and he tells you a lot about the world. You can learn things. But after a fight, um, Atreus falls over ill. Mimir says, the, the witch is the only one who can help him. And so you take Atreus back Kratos to the witch. Is like, oh. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, but he's visibly upset. Yeah. To, to the point, uh, there, there are moments where Atreus is separated from Kratos. Like, while they're together, he's like, boy, do this, do this. You, are, you need to be better. You need to be better, blah, blah, blah. He's very disciplinarian. But the moment he's separated from his boy, he, he freaks out. This is it. Like, there's a moment where Atreus gets stolen by some elves and goes across a ravine. And the game says, click L3 and R3 for, <laughs> for uh, Spartan Rage. And it doesn't run out yeah. until you get to yeah. it. And it's just one of those moments where it's like, this guy's going to go to any length. To like, he like he doesn't know how to show it, but he loves his son. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a moment where he's carrying Atreus in his arms back to the witch. And you, you crank this elevator thing to go up to her house. And it's probably like 45 seconds to a minute of just staring at, in, into Kratos' face as he holds the, his holds Atreus. And it's like, this is... Deep breaths. Yeah, just deep breaths. He looks conflicted, upset. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just one of those moments where it's like, I'm I'm not only in a video game, but I'm in a film. I'm in an art piece. Like, this is... There's commentary going on. There's... Mm -hmm. there's it's transcendent. It's a yeah, transcendent it's, moment. It's amazing. Like, you're just, you're just there. There's nothing else going on. Like, yeah. you're, you're in this moment with him. It's just... It's one of my favorite moments of the game. It's yeah. just... He's standing there holding him, considering, like... What if he dies? All this stuff. So you can just you know what he's thinking. Yeah, the it's game doesn't have to say anything to yeah. it. Kratos doesn't say, "Man, I really hope Atreus is okay. This sucks. Yeah. I wish I could show him how much I love him." Yeah. it's just all there for you because yeah. the game present oh, man. just up to that point the way everything's laid out. Like they're magicians that made this game. Yeah, man. one of my favorite one of my favorite moments is this. Shout out to Corey Barlog. It's, it is it is prime storytelling. Yes, it's beautiful, mm -hmm. and all people love a good story. They do. We're built on it. Yep. So we get Atreus back to normal. Mm -hmm. He's doing good. Um, he goes off the rails a little bit. Yeah, once he once Atreus Kratos tells him he's a god. It's right after this moment too, when he's about to die, because the the witch, which we also now find out is Freya. Yes. The Norse mm -hmm. goddess. I didn't even know who Freya was until. Yeah, she was a goddess in Norse mythology. Mm -hmm. We find out that that's Freya, and she says, "This gonna keep happening if you don't tell him what he is." Mm -hmm. And Kratos is like, "No, woman." <laughs> Funny, I didn't realize until just a second ago whenever you were talking about it how Atreus was sick before the game. Like, the game mm -hmm. talks about how he was just sick. I thought he just had a cold or the flu or something. <laughs> yeah. It was the same sickness, duh. Yeah. Like, of course, Will. <laughs> like, that makes a whole lot more sense to me now. But, I, um, I assume you could be right. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right. That makes it make more sense that, like, he's, like, getting sick again. Yeah. And it's because of that. Um, also, just to go back really fast, I love the moment where uh, one of my favorite moments in the game, we just talked about one of yours, one of my favorites is um, when you're fighting... Uh, Mogi and what is it? Magni and Modi. Magni and Modi, yeah. And um, one of them saying something about like, "Oh, that's what I told your mom when I gave it to her," or something yeah. like that. And Atreus goes, <laughs> yeah. and he tries to Spartan Rage out. And I was like, "Ooh, that's so awesome!" I think that's when he gets sick. Yeah. I think he tries Spartan Rage. That's yeah, when that's he passes what, out. Yeah, yeah. And um, so yeah, that happened. And then I was thinking like, "Ooh, the final boss fight of this game, uh, Atreus is probably gonna Spartan Rage out and go crazy," but it didn't happen. No. Probably gonna be the sequel. Yeah. Maybe that, that's God of War 3, the well, new God of War 3. Yeah, he's got all kinds of powers that I don't think we have, we've learned yet because we yeah. find out at the end. We'll Remember when he's like, can I turn into a wolf? What if he can? Yeah, yeah and Kratos goes, um, he's like, I do not think so. And yeah. he's like, what if I can or whatever? And Kratos is like, feel free to prove me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I love that Kratos, this game gives Kratos plenty of opportunities to show a sense of humor yeah, exactly. that he's never shown before. And very like very rarely he takes it, but he he... He does. There's a part towards the end, I think it's after the end game, where Mimir is telling Atreus something, and Atreus is like, really, really, really? And he's talking about, like, dragon poop. And Kratos goes, um, the head is having fun with you, boy. And it's just like, it's yeah, he's got a sense of humor. Yeah. He just, a, he just kills stuff, though. <laughs> yeah. The head is having fun with you, boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, oh God, I don't even know where to... I don't know what to hit from here. Yeah, Our camera yeah. is dying, so maybe we should cut real quick and then okay. come back uh, to continue. Okay. We're back, and we have a new vision <laughs> after our cut. So, we were talking about how Freya sends you to Helheim. Yes. And she says, but your Leviathan axe ain't going to work. It ain't going to cut it, because hell in Norse mythology is cold. In Christianity, the hell we, the, the, the hell that you're most used to hearing about, 
um, whether you're a Christian or not in America. Most people say, oh, it's hot as hell. Yep. Hell is typically hot. Yeah. And when that comes from the, the Bible Christianity. And but, I thought it was really cool that just from like a visual standpoint that like, I was like, oh God, because we've been to hell several times in the old God of War games and I was like oh, yeah. going back to the pits of Hades and all that stuff and I was like, oh, it's kind of chilly. Yeah, it's kind of nippy in here. There's, nice. a, there's a different hell. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. But yeah, we're going to hell and we, we, in the cut, we were like, well, we haven't, we haven't given one of the most, the biggest, well, most well hidden spoilers of the game. Because in all the marketing, they don't tell you, you might get these. You might get it. No, they're all like, nope, you look at the axe. Here's the yeah. new axe. This is your new weapon. This is yeah. the Kratos, Kratos and the axe. It's all about Kratos and the Leviathan axe. Mm-hmm. This is his new look. The ultimate misdirection. Mm-hmm. She says, Freya says, As your, your axe ain't going to work there. And I think Kratos is the one that, who says like, who's, someone says specifically, I have to go dig up my past. I think Kratos, Kratos says, that. says that. So he goes back to the house. And I remember... At the beginning of the game, he was telling Atreus, like, don't look too close whenever you're down there. There's s- hidden in there. Like, don't, yeah. basically saying, like, don't. Oh, I just said a bad word. Uh, <laughs> we can bleep that. <laughs> well, 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 I'll, I'll, hit, I'll hit us with the, with the censorship. Okay. That's okay. Um, we got, if one day we monetize, we don't, YouTube, want, don't want YouTube coming back around here. Yeah. Get out Come, of here. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want YouTube coming and demonetizing us. Okay. So, there's stuff down there, like, don't look too closely. Sure. So, whenever you go back, uh, I was thinking, like, is he about to get the Blades of Chaos? Because he says, I'm about to dig out my past. I think he's about to get the Blades of Chaos. Yeah. He opens the thing up, gets the blades, and that music kicks in. Oh. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Some epic chorus of deep-voiced men that just sounds mm-hmm. awesome. And uh, that was one of the moments where I had to stand up. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, here we go. Yeah, I just had to stand up because I just I can't be late. Like, I cannot be laying in bed for this moment. I have yeah. to stand up, get my blood flowing because it was just so awesome. Um, but yeah, that's probably one and of my other favorite moments same. of the game. And then, of course, the game does a really good job of giving you, like, yes, there's there's gameplay that, that the there's the base level, which is everything works the way it should. But the game will typically, at points for the story, reject the systems that, that govern, the ga- govern gameplay to give you the idea, such as when you have infinite Spartan Rage in that moment. Mm-hmm. It makes sense for the story that... Kratos would hulk out at this moment. Yeah. There's a part also in Offheim where you drop down and you're supposed to get to this last thing to that will kill the dark elves and you're they they just give you this this horde of like tiny level 1 enemies that you're just like swinging and they're flying off the edge uh-huh. and, and and it's just like your typical enemies that you fight are not that easy to kill yeah. but the game rejects that system to give you the story of we're almost there, Atreus, push, and then we yeah. like you have this moment. Yeah. And I love that. And so of course after you get the Blades of Chaos, you are flooded with like these like cold oriented enemies mm-hmm. that are it have super so low health. <laughs> and like Kratos wraps the chain around his arm and he walks out the house and he's like under siege now and it's just <sighs> everything and they're they're super easy to kill. And it's I think one of those moments where the game teases you with an ending. The mm-hmm. game teases you like, oh, I bet, I bet you think it's on, we're almost through here. Yeah. Because you up, you fully upgrade the Leviathan Axe. Mm-hmm. Like you have five up, five sets of upgrades, and before you get the Blades of Chaos, you've got it fully upgraded. So you're like, okay, if I've upgraded my weapon all the way, mm-hmm. and the upgrade, the upgrades only come in certain moments of the story, then I'm almost Story's done. wrapping up. Yeah, I'm yeah. almost done. And then you get upset, and then they're like, oh no, wait, you got another weapon with five upgrades. And, oh man. The, That's when you know, like, you're only about halfway through. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. once I reached the peak the first time and met Mimir, I was like, it's wrapping up, right? I was like, there's <laughs> no. No, it is, <laughs> no not. it is not. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, God, yeah, it was, that the chaos, the Blades of Chaos was a beautiful moment. And he's mm-hmm. always, he's hi- he's he's hiding that from, from Atreus. Because mm-hmm. part of, at the beginning, you, the, his wrist armor is just these wraps around mm-hmm. his forearms. Mm-hmm. Which we know of Kratos that he spent most of his life with the hot chains wrapped around his forearms. Yeah, yeah. so um, he's got those scars hidden. Yeah, so but, Kratos, so Kratos don't start asking questions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> questions he don't want to know the answer yeah. to. <laughs> also, that reminds me, another part of the story, a uh, big issue is that there's a there's a side quest where Atreus they you go and investigate um, this man who killed his father. It's one of those spirits that you help out. I don't know if you've done this. I, I kind of crit past this whole game, to be honest. Okay. I didn't do a lot of side quests. Well, I did quests. some side quests. There's one where you pass, you, it's one of those spirits, he pops up, he says, my son killed me, he stole this thing, and you're trying to get it for one of the dwarves. Uh-huh. And you go and find it, and you learn, and Atreus, whenever he learns this, he's like, how could a son kill his father? 
that doesn't make any sense that like I he even says at one point he's like yeah I get frustrated with you dad but or father but I would never kill you that's insane uh-huh. he, there's this big focus on how Atreus cannot understand he cannot compute why a son would ever kill his father but we know based on the pre story the, 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 what happened before one of the things that Kratos is hiding from Atreus is he killed his dad yeah. he killed Zeus mm-hmm. like and so that's another thing that he's hiding from Atreus um, and that's part of his past with the Blades of Chaos that he doesn't want to know mm-hmm. want, want Atreus to know so that's another thing I don't, I don't know if that's a, a line of uh, dialogue that only comes after that side quest I think but, it might be because there's a lot of um, unique dialogue that's tied to I didn't know that until after the I beat the game really mm-hmm. but apparently like listening to spoiler modes on it and stuff there's a lot of like optional dialogue and backstories and stuff that I, yeah. I never got Oh, yeah. I, like, they, they, I can't imagine how many audio files they have on this game oh, just no the actors saying all this different stuff that a lot of people will probably never hear which right. is so cool but yeah um, part of that story was really compelling for me is that like you have the, there's so many obstacles to fatherhood that Kratos has because of his past sins mm-hmm. which you call them sins but he felt they were necessary yeah um, one, another thing interesting about what you just said you were saying how Atreus can't comprehend that, that like a father would, or a son would kill his father mm-hmm. there's another moment where Atreus just doesn't really get this whole parenthood thing yeah. which is where we're, I guess we can transition into the end right now Sure. Um, we can have some final points we can of make course. again but um, transitioning to the end where uh, um, you're fighting Balder and Freya comes in and basically gives Balder the opportunity to kill her yeah um, because, yeah, Baldur's all mad at Freya because she blessed him with invincibility and vulnerability, mm-hmm. which in turn made it where he can't experience pleasure, I guess. Right. He can't, he can't feel, feel anything. He can't feel anything. So he can't get drunk. He can't have fun with the ladies. Right. He can't do anything. He can't eat, taste food. He can't taste food. That. And so he's really mad at his mom. Does not like her one bit. Gives some depth to his vi- to the villain. Yeah. Gives some depth to the villainy, for sure. Um, and then, but yeah, so what I was saying is... um. So sorry, no, so, sorry. It's I just, a parenthood I thing. Myself. Yeah, yeah. I, parenthood I, I, I think I know where you're going. Yeah. So whenever, um, like she she basically says to uh, Balder, like, "Yo, kill me now," and Atreus or Kratos steps in and is like, "No, that's not gonna happen," and kills Balder. Yeah. And keeps that from happening. And Atreus, after you do that, Atreus is like, "I don't understand." And then Freya's like, like basically gives a, a, a Kratos the death stare. Yeah. And is like, "You like." Not only that, she tells him, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna parade your body through the streets of hell." That's or what whatever. it is. Yeah, I forgot yeah, exactly. She, what she, 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 she says you, something where you're like, "Oh boy." <laughs> <laughs> okay, made mama mad. Um, but she says that, and then uh, yeah, Atreus is like, "I don't get why Freya would like let him kill her or whatever." And, right. Uh, Kratos is just like, "Well, you know, that's what uh, here." He's like. Would you let me kill you? Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Yeah, I would. I can't yeah. explain it. Like, if, I it would. Meant, if it meant that you would, if live. it meant that you would live, I would let you." And I just think that's so cool. Like, it's, yeah, uh, it's, man, it makes me want to be a dad. Man. And it's the whole thing. Like Kratos, not he understands mm-hmm. what they're doing. He under mm-hmm. like he understands completely what Freya is going through, where she would be willing to let, but she he still can't let it happen. Yeah, like he's still going to intervene because he knows the right. Like, out of the two of them. If one of them gets to live, it needs to be the good one. Yeah, it needs to be Freya one. and not evil of Balder. Right. Yeah. But what's important, I like, I like that you brought up the thing about Balder as well, is that what's important, video game villains very rarely do this, or writing for villains very rarely do this, but a good villain is a villain you can understand why they're bad. Mm-hmm. A, they're good, good villains are not, he's trying to take over the world for no reason, or whatever. Like, that's not compelling. I don't even care about yeah. killing this. That's person. why Breaking Bad's my favorite show ever. Yeah, because you complete. Well, he's yeah. It's he's the a, backstory of a villain of the whole series. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like, it's a it's another aspect of a good game. I, I I'm, I'm rambling. I'm yeah. sorry, oh, no, you're but fine. it's just the. That's what we're here. You got to make, vi- if a villain you can understand is a good villain. Yeah. Like a villain that you have to you have to you feel a tinge of regret if you kill them. Mm-hmm. That's a good villain, I think. That is a and good. Baller, villain. Baller was a good villain. Mm-hmm. Um. Man, but that moment, that moment, you texted me. I hadn't quite gotten there, but you texted me the what Kratos says because Freya turns to Kratos and she's like, pretty pretty much like, why are you on your high horse? There, you've hidden all this stuff from your son. There's still things that Atreus doesn't know about you. Uh-huh. And Kratos, and Kratos is like, you know what? We've been through a lot. <laughs> Atreus knows most everything. This is yeah. all happening. And so the next words he says, he's like not looking at Atreus. He's looking at Freya, and he goes. Listen, boy, and listen well. <laughs> like I come, from, I come from a land called Sparta. Like I've, I've, I've killed, killed many people. 
blah blah blah. Just gives yeah. him a very clean cut. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, he gives him. I've killed c- countless, countless people or whatever, like some deserving, some deserving and some, some who not. were not. Yeah, I killed my father, and that's when he turns and looks at Atreus. Yeah, mm. Mm. it's God, that, yeah. Th- those are just like you don't. I don't very often get chills playing a video game, but it's just like yep. that this, was one of them. This every every pitch in this game is a home run for some reason. Yeah. I, it's, it's just, it resonates. Yeah. Oh man. I cannot wait for God of War 2. Yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I guess no now way, real quick, let's just go into, uh, so I don't know about you, Keith, but the game, whenever it ends after you go up and, um, you, well, the whole, uh, purpose of the game basically was to scatter your mother's ashes. Yeah. And before you get up there, you're in Jotunheim and you realize that she has orchestrated this entire journey mm-hmm. and that she was a giant she was the last of the giants, and the giants in this world aren't actually giant. They're just normal-sized people. Yeah. But well, so, well, they so, are kind of big. Are. I think they can go big or small. Yeah, but I think, I think the mama was just like... Oh, yeah, she was definitely small. I'm saying, I think, in the end, there's that field of all those mountains are actually giants dead. Oh, okay. So I think they can kind of go big yeah, or small. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, basically... Yeah, I'm you, not so trying you, to correct you. Apologies. <laughs> no. So you, you realize that she's orchestrated this whole thing, and that there's ancient paintings... Of Kratos and Atreus doing all the things they did, fighting the world serpent, uh-huh. riding, climbing mountains, doing all this crazy stuff. Yep. And uh, yeah, that was just awesome. Just realizing, like, whoa, this whole thing was like orchestrated and prophesized. Mm-hmm. It just gives you a, like another, like the old games felt like you were playing through a legend, and yeah. this game more than ever contextualizes that as like, yeah, look at these ancient paintings depicting what you did through this game. Yeah. Like, so cool. And it's kind of revealed by that that she orchestrated the whole thing that they would return to Jotunheim and essentially it seems like she was the last protector of the giants you learn throughout that Odin hates the giants mm-hmm. and has killed them all and she was the last protector of them and that's who Balder was looking for and that's who Balder was looking for and it seems that she needed I'm getting chills thinking about this story right now it seems that she orchestrated this she needed an outsider to set events in motion that would, I'm assuming one day, bring revive these giants again and defeat Odin, who is in this in the mythology of this game completely evil. Yeah, he's a very like controlling psychological warfare. Yeah, like manipulative, just sneaky, like kind of. He reminds me of like a Walter White type character, just yeah. like very paranoid and like mm-hmm. always keeping eyes on people. What's this person think? Okay, let's manipulate it by doing this. Let's. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't get a whole lot of Odin lore. I really wish I'd ridden around on the boat more mm-hmm. just to hear Mimir talk about everything. But from what I did hear about Odin and like Thor, like Thor kidding. seems like a jerk. And what Keith, I want to talk about real fast <laughs> yeah, my favorite jerk. moment of this entire game, <laughs> other than the stranger fight at the beginning. Of course. At the very end, I don't know about you, Keith, but whenever they give you the option, you beat the game, they're like, you can go home uh-huh. or you can go do some other stuff. Did you go home or did you go do some I didn't other go stuff? home. You didn't go did home? You go, I need to go home. I, do I need to go home? I've never been home. I, th- I thought that was it. I thought I thought going home was going back to Midgard. Well, can I spoil this for you right Please, now? Please, I need to go home. I didn't know I had to go home. You need to go home. I kind of <laughs> don't want to spoil this for you right now. Okay, Keith, let me tell you something. <laughs> so I, <laughs> so I um, the, the phrasing of this of this joke I'm about to give, I owe it to, to Easy Allies. I didn't coin sure. this joke. It's we really funny. Easy we love Easy Allies so much. But basically, <laughs> Ben Moore was saying, like, once they give you that option, he was like, you know, this has all been presented in one cut. I have not seen Kratos take a nap. I have yeah. not seen Kratos eat food. Yeah. We're going home. We're going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> me and Ben Moore both were like, okay, we're going home. Yeah. So we go home. I didn't we, know you could go back home. You could get yeah, home. You go home. Dang, you go home. You lay in bed. Um, they have their two little beds. They lay down, and it says, years later, you wake up. There's lightning raining down around the what? house. What? Lightning's raining down around the house. Atreus is like, what's going on? What's going on? You guys get up, walk out. Atreus, or Kratos push, pushes the door open. You see a big, fat dude standing there. Odin. With a hood, big fat dude with a hood standing there. Camera's like swinging around, like you see Kratos is Kratos. The camera's like right here. This is Kratos, and you see the guy right there. Yeah. Kratos goes. The camera kind of pans around, so you see Kratos from the front. He goes, "Who are you?" Camera pans all the way behind the hooded guy. He pulls back his cape. Mjolnir. Oh shoot! Yeah. Thor. Oh boy. <laughs> and one thing I love about this is throughout the game, whenever you hear about Thor. Uh, Thor in this world is not handsome Chris Hemsworth. No. He's not like super charming, super handsome. He's a fat, drunk, son of a gun. Killer. Bad Kills for dude. fun. Yep. Kills for fun. And you see him. <laughs> you don't see his face because he's hooded. 
but you see that he is definitely very large. He does not look like he takes very good care of himself, and he looks like he is mad. At Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, so, killed his br- half brother. Got a war two. Yep, dude. <laughs> mm, you got to go and watch that clip. <laughs> I, did, I didn't go home. <laughs> Cool. Why didn't I go home? Of course Kratos needs a nap. He cares so much about it. That's funny. They, it was like a Marvel stinger. Yeah. It totally was with Thor in it too. Oh man. I gotta go home. But yeah, that was my favorite moment of the game. So, I do want to re- really return back. What do you think about that theory? Because uh, just a theory. They don't reveal it to you. But my thought is that they're only not the only reason. Yeah, maybe she loves Kratos. But the goal of their mom, of Atreus' mom, Kratos' wife, as the protector of the giants was to bring in this outsider who had the capability of kind of like breaking the mold. Like every like the Norse gods today are, we do what Norse gods do. Mm-hmm. Like Odin's evil, Thor does this. So you mean she was like trying to introduce Kratos to the mix? She, I'm saying that she was trying to introduce the only person, like a person who could be an agent of change, who wasn't like, Thor, pretty much Odin had everybody trapped in what they were doing. There, yeah. there was no change that could be possible. Freya couldn't leave realms. But Kratos yeah. is unbound by all this crap. Like, Kratos is unbound by Odin's foolishness. And so I feel like she introduced Kratos as an agent of change who, under the guise of, oh, I just want you to spread my ashes one day. Yeah. Instead, she knew, because the whole thing, this talk is like, she knew that she wanted us, because Kratos like, surely she didn't want us to go to Jotunheim. Yeah. But the whole time, she knew what she yeah. wanted him to do, and that in order to do that, they would have to introduce change that would hopefully yeah. set the wheels turning to change See, that's things. That's really in interesting. That, that could have been like part of her motivation. See, the way I saw it is, I always just thought that her motivation was that Kratos is never going to tell Atreus who he is. Yeah. So if I orchestrate this event and they end up in Jotunheim and see all this stuff like these prophecies, hmm. he'll know that he's something special. He's Maybe so. half god, half giant. Maybe so. so. It was probably it might have been both of those. Maybe there. so. Yeah. And then one other big spoiler is that. Atreus goes and goes out to the peak. This is a weird one. But yeah, this this video. Oh, video! I was or, thinking you were about to say who Atreus, what they kept calling him. Oh no! I'll, the okay. Giants call him. Two more spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Kratos goes to the wall of uh, the things chronicling their their journey. He pulls back a tapestry, and it's Kratos on the ground. Atreus above him. Obviously, Kratos' death scene. Mm-hmm. One day, Kratos will die. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> not either. I didn't know that I loved this character so much. I know. But I'm certainly not ready for it now. God of War 3 might be Atreus as the main character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would play that game. I was thinking I would that. too. Yeah. I would play a game where you like yeah. bow, bow oriented. Yeah. I daggers. feel like you'd have to be older. Oh, yeah. That point. No, yeah. I yeah. would say like adult. Yeah. Kratos. Dies. God of War 2 will probably still be Kratos and Atreus fighting Thor. Mm. Probably. Whew. Man, this video has run long. We have talked yep. a lot. We didn't even talk about how the game plays. It plays great. It plays fantastic. Get, everybody go go play it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not like a, oh, you got to get through this kind of yeah weird combat to get to these story moments. Like, it's seamless. It's all seamless. It's, it's the same reason I love The Last of Us so much, where yeah. it feels like there's no real break between gameplay and story. And it it's all fun. feeds into itself. Fun all the way through. Fantastic. You, everything you hit feels like you hit it. There's it, Everything is just right. We're giving this game a 10 out of 10. I don't 10 out of 10. If, if you can go to 11 out of 10, 11 out of 10 would play again. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's so much fun. I don't know if you have any last Fantastic. minute things. I mean, I, people have been watching for a while if they've been watching. Um, mm-hmm. I, it's I just good. It's, yeah, just, it's just fantastic. If we go anymore, it'll just devolve into, it's already pretty much gotten down to. You remember that part? You remember the part where they did this? Oh, the part? oh yeah. One more thing we do <laughs> have to do. I'm not doing a bit right now. Sure, we do sure. one more thing. Uh, Atreus, what they, the giants have a, new, a different name for Atreus. Yes. The Actually, there's two more things I want to say. Right, please. Okay. The giants, uh, well, before that, let's talk about Atreus, the name Atreus. Mm-hmm. I really love the reason why he's named Atreus. He's named Atreus because when Kratos was in Sparta doing Spartan things, uh, probably a lot of man love going on. You know, the Spartans were... Yeah. Maybe Atreus was Kratos' lover. We don't know. Yeah, we don't <laughs> know that. <laughs> but, um, basically, there was a fellow soldier that Kratos had who was just always optimistic and could never have his spirit broken. Yeah, because the rest of them were just kill, kill, kill. Yeah, we're just, you know, killing machines. And Kratos is interesting because, like, he could never fully understand why Atreus was like that, but he always respected and acknowledged that it was something to, like, strive to attain. Yes. Like, attain that state of mind that Atreus was in. And so he named his son after him. I Which, thought that was really cute. And he kind of embodies that, too. He's yeah. always happy-go-lucky. Yeah. It really seems just, like. Oh, that was a good moment, too. That made my yes. heart grow a little bit, too, like the cringe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then so we find out that the Giants call, we were wrapping it up and now we're just talking yeah. again. <laughs> the Giants call Atreus Loki. 
Mm-hmm. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Yeah. That's that's another nail in the... Not cough, cough, that's a bad phrase. That's another, like, link in the chain of... They've taken some liberties with this. Yeah. Uh, obviously... Hopefully they'll explain that a little bit more. I don't know what there is to explain. Oh, they've got... We'll find out more. There's no... Yeah. Because in Norse mythology, Loki is Thor's brother. Yeah. All um, you Avengers fans out there know about that. Yeah. Um, so, who knows? Yeah. We'll find out, hopefully, in, what, three or four years? <laughs> yeah, probably. Maybe ten. Maybe another eight years. <laughs> maybe. Who knows? PS5, well, definitely. Yeah, well, we've got to hit The Last of Us 2 yeah. next year. That seems like whatever. it'll be the swan song of the PS4. Yeah. And then it has we'll to go be. into PS5. We'll be talking um, about that game, too. <laughs> yeah. I just want to, before we go, um, I will be giving Kevin his PS4 back. I want to say thank you once again, Kevin, for letting me use that PS4. Thank you, Kevin. And um, I give it back next month. We're going to the beach together, actually. Nice. But I'm taking this month to play through Persona 5. Awesome. Which of the two of us, I'm definitely the RPG fan, so I don't know if we're ever going to have a spoiler talk on Persona 5. I probably 5. won't be playing Persona 5, that's not really in my wheelhouse, but yeah. we'll see. But I'm playing through it, and I just want to say that we're doing a top 10 slash top 15, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> whatever top I narrow 20, it down to. Top 30. Maybe top 30. <laughs> yeah. We like to, we just like to talk, folks. Basically, we're doing a, our favorite video, or our favorite video games of all time video pretty soon. Mm-hmm. And Persona 5, I'm only about 10 hours in, it's a 100 hour game. Wow. But if I put in a lot more time in the next week and it keeps going like it's going, it might be on that list. Wow. Fantastic. Impressive. Yes. Love it. This has been a lot of fun. I don't, there's so much more we can say about God of War. There's cool. There's more cool moments. I'm sure if we could talk for another 10 minutes, we'd say, and another one of my favorite moments. Yeah. But we got to shut this baby down. Yeah, we got to go. It's almost an hour. I got to go to the doctor, folks. Yeah. So we'll see you all next time. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe. Hey, leave a comment if there's other things you want me and Will to talk about. If you like our style, yeah, do that. Drop a comment. We'll see what we can do. Um, but until the next time, we we have a great deal of love for you all out there. Adios. Also, plug in Dungeon Boys. That's right. Yeah, Recording Dungeon Boys. Recording Dungeon Boys today. Watch Dungeon Boys. Think a new one's coming out today? Yeah, already out. All right. No, out in three minutes from the time we're.